Good evening, good evening. Come on, everybody, let's give the Lord a hand clap on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for another Wednesday's word. Amen. How many know God is good? God is good, and all the time he is good. For all the ones who are watching by um, our, on, on Facebook, we ask that you go to our website, www.conwaystpaul.com, and look on the Bible study, and you'll see our, our lesson. And you can print it out, or you can just look at it online and follow us tonight. We thank God for that, and it's for your keeps if you would like it um, to have one. Um, again, it's www.conwaystpaul.com. Amen. And we're going to try to um, get through this series, Facing <laughs> the Giants. Amen. Amen. We all have giants in some form or fashion. We all have giants. Amen. 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 And we thank God for um, another Wednesday's word. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. We, we thank him for a new month. A new month. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap for a new month. Amen. Amen. In the Bible study left the Bible study class tonight, um, and who are watching on Facebook will be the first one, first ones to um, hear our challenge for the month of June. Amen. Each month, um, I try to give a challenge for the month of June. Amen. 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 Who remember what the challenge was for May? Mm -hmm. Wake up. No, no. Trust and believe. Trust and believe. Trust and believe in God. Well, I hope you do wake up. <laughs> Amen. That was May. Trusting and believing God. Trusting and believing God. Okay, June. Okay, here's our challenge for June. Amen? Amen. I think everybody can relate to this because um, um, we hold on to stuff and we carry it with us. It wears us down. Amen? The, the challenge for June is let go and let God. Amen? Yeah. Aren't you tired of carrying stuff around yeah. that you don't have yeah. to carry? Yes, A scripture reference to that is 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. It says, cast some of your cares no, 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 no. to the Lord. No. That my words or is that the Bible version? That's, that's, that's my version. version. Because that's what I do. That's what I do. Uh -huh. I carry some uh -huh. of my burden, of my burdens, mm -hmm. of, uh, of my giants to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do as well. Right. We only want to give God what we want to give Him. Right. And then we wonder why we're so tired. Why we're so fatigued. Mm -hmm. Why we're so exhausted. Mm -hmm. Exhausted. Because we carry what we don't need to be carrying. Mm -hmm. So this month in June, let go. And let go. Mm -hmm. And we should be able to do that if we trust it and believe. Absolutely. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> if we trust him. And believe that he's able to do all things but fail. Why wouldn't you let go? All right. Why do you? Why do we hold on to to what we hold on? Hurt. Why? Hurt. Hurt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. Distrust. A yeah. uh, security blanket. Yeah. Okay. You just used to it. Yeah. You just. It's a habit. Okay, anybody else? Why do you hold on to stuff? Unbelief. Unbelief? Okay. And you know what else happens? Eventually, it shows when you carry it. You don't act the same. Let's say I have a 
problem with uh, well, I ain't got a problem with nobody. <laughs> but let me just say I have a problem with somebody. Somebody offended me. Somebody said something. Or church or whatever the case may be. If I see that person, guess what's going to happen? Probably not. If I got a problem with you, probably not. Because I'm holding on to the grudge or the hurt. Absolutely. That's what we all do. Now, watch me now. I'm a follower of Christ. But when I see that person who hurt me, I don't speak to them. Anybody talking tonight? <laughs> So that's why I said I cast some of my cat of my cares to God. Because I only give him what I want to give him. And I want to hold what I want to hold. Amen. Amen. The month of June, brothers and sisters, I'm telling you. You need to I've been, I've been saying this for a long time. For a long time. Because we that's how we do. Whether you Save, sanctify, all of that. You hold on to stuff. I used to, and it causes me to act different. It really does. I can't operate like I need to operate in Christ. It just I'm a different person when I'm holding on to stuff. I can't, I can, I want it, some, some of us won't even look at the person. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking tonight. Y'all not talking. <laughs> but that's a good teaching. That's real talk. Jenna, am I right? We hold on to stuff. I remember when I was coming as a kid. Watch this. Y'all probably can relate to this. You know how kids are, right? When they're playing, they disagree, they've been given a fight, they mad at each other, right? It don't last. So the fact <laughs> they get over it and they're back playing. <laughs> so why we can't do that as believers? We hold on to that thing for sometimes months. No, let's see. We hold on to it for minutes. Minutes turn to hours. Hours turn to days. Days turn to months. Months turn to years. Years turn to what? Years and decades for real. Yes, ma'am. Huh? Right, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the parents still. Yes. Oh, I thought you wanted to have a comment on it. So, so, so that's the challenge for June. I've been saying this for a long time because we hold on to stuff, and, it, and it's not healthy for our for our walk with Christ. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so imagine, just imagine, imagine. You know, um, I tell I tell people this, not only leaders but everybody who's a follower of Christ. Believe this or not, but it's true. Whatever you're holding on to, right? You got to have, and it may hurt. I'm not saying that it doesn't, because some people do some mean stuff and say some mean stuff to people. That's real talk. But in this walk of Christ, brother and sister, you never heard me say anything else. Latasha, you got to have a short term memory. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard. But think about it. Football is a good analogy. Right? Allison, what's this analogy in football? Okay. Let's say we run a play. Okay, you might not be good. Red Walker, you, Red Walker, you know football. Yes, you do especially the football. Watch this analogy. 
analogy in football in a short term memory. Okay? I'm sure y'all saw football on TV. And sometimes they make a bad play, a fumble, or a turnover, or a foul, or something. Right? So what if they hold on to that bad play? They ain't no good for the next play. Because their mind is still on the previous play. And the next game. So if you're holding on to the previous stuff, the past, it's going to affect you going forward. That's our hand. You won't be productive. And guess what happens? If you're not producing, the coach is going to do what? Yeah. And he should. Or she should. Because you're not focused. Because you're holding on to the previous play. And that's how we do. We hold on to what happened to us Previously. Am I right about it? Ain't nobody said that, but I know I'm right. Yeah, we got a Joe, somebody, everybody say Joe. I'm letting it go. And I'm going to let go. Okay? All right, any questions on holding on and letting go? Nobody want to talk about that? <laughs> you changed your mind? What you have? This is Bible study. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Pat. She, she told it. She told it. We tell them people around here. And we have fun, too. Yes, ma'am. Because you're not ready for the next play. And I should beat you up because you're not ready for the next play. That play is dead. When that, when that referee blow the whistle, that play is over. You can't go back and replay that play. It's over. It's done. So what somebody have done or said to you is what can you do? All that can do is say, I'm sorry. Because, because this is how you get it solved. Because 
if, if, if you're dealing with adults, this is how you get it solved. One person talking at a time. Mm -hmm. right. Let that person get out what they need to get out. Need to get out. Let it all out. Okay, now, right now, you, you didn't have your turn. Now let me get out. It's my turn. And now I, I listen to you. Now you listen to me. Let's, let's sell this thing. It's been lingering around too long. Because the Bible says where, where the spirit is, there's liberty. A lot of people are around people with no liberty. Because the spirit is not right. Because I got a problem with you. And I'm not talking to you about the problem. Amen. Amen. All right. We, we, we're, not, we're not only at one another, but this is what we'll do. Okay, you could be sitting right there, right? And I tell you, friends, as long as I say, hey. I'm trying to get there. 
got you. That's good. That's a good way to put it. But you are so right. People yeah. can say so mean things to you where that you can't. You don't even realize where it's coming from. But yeah. we do have to show that light. Yeah. And you are so right. You are a good mediator, a replica, however you need to put it, in showing us how yeah. to be that way. So I why, okay. Why? Why? Why am I? You know, I'm in grace. I'm good at. I'm not putting myself up up here that I mastered it, but I've been through it. I know what it's like as a pastor for so many years. I know what it's like. Imagine me being a pastor and, you know, everybody not going to like you as a pastor. That's right. So when they are mean to me and say things to me, what if, what if I were to hold on to that? The church, well, the church won't go forward. And then you'll be preaching out of yourself. Absolutely. And you're preaching your master and be telling people all across the pulpit. And it's not edifying God. It's edifying me trying to get even, trying to get revenge. See, see, yeah, see yeah. y'all, we gonna get to the lesson tonight. See, so many people, they, they want revenge. That's right, And they have used the pulpit. The pulpit. But not use the pulpit. They'll use anything for revenge. Any opportunity, they will use revenge to get back. Who got time for that? So that's what I'm saying. You gotta, you gotta let stuff go and move on. And another thing, when you let go, watch me now. This is real talk, y'all. I know you, you deal with it because I deal with it. You gotta be delivered from people. People. You gotta be delivered from people. If you're not delivered from people, guess what's going to happen? Several things can happen. But at the top, one of the things at the top is when you're not delivered from people, you're setting yourself up for disappointment. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you're so invested in the person. Mm -hmm. And people have flaws. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so if you don't deliver, you no, come on back. So that's what I'm saying. It's so true. We are not, well, I am, I'm delivered from people, and that's an everyday thing being delivered from people. You don't master that overnight. What is being delivered from people? All right, okay, all right. Let's just say, all right, let's use you for an example. Let's just say you and you, you and you. <laughs> you and I have a disagreement. You didn't like what I had to say. And you let me know. That, that you didn't like what I that, that what went on. Yes. Right? So now how do I take that? Do I do I take it as okay, I'm gonna get top back. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm gonna take it, okay, Ty got me today. <laughs> Ty got me today. <laughs> got me good too. <laughs> and see the flesh in me won't let me forget. So when I see her again, I'm coming back. But if I've been delivered from people and what they have, what they say about me and what they do to me, I brush it off. And the next time I see her, hey girl, what's up? And genuinely mean. And genuinely mean. That's being delivered from people when you don't act like they act. You kill them with what? Kindness. Kindness. Love and kindness, Mother Allen, will win every time. I promise you. Yes, ma'am. So I like that door. Yeah, that's a door. But I will also say, too, if you, if you can also know if you've grown in Christ, because if, if I have gone off of you, and, and I'm in the church, so I know I've done this a few times. Uh -huh. If I have gone off on somebody and I, and, and I get convicted about it, Well, well, let me say this. You say if you get convicted, you will be convicted if you're a follower of Christ, because the spirit is the spirit is right there saying, "All right, all right, that time now you you know better." Now, now you have a choice. 
When they are, do I listen to the spirit? Or do I listen to flesh and say, oh, I'm going to get time back. And most of us, that's how we do it. When we want revenge. So that's when the spirit wars against the flesh. That's the war. That's the battle. That can become a giant. That's a battle. But, Who's going to win? But I'll, I'll even say to that, though, that's a good point. Because once you feel with Christ and the Holy Spirit rules, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. And so I exactly know, okay, time, you, I feel it. You did wrong. I can fit you right then in that moment. Mm -hmm. And most times, I, and I say most times because if it's, if it's appropriate, sometimes you just have to go to one-on-one -on -one with some people. And then and it, just, just apologize. Absolutely. Them, but as soon as I In some cases, it depends on what it is. It, it could be real heated, or, or if something could really damage me, mm -hmm. I may have to wait a while mm -hmm. before I go back. Because right now, flesh is overpowering, right. and it does. Right. You want me to give y'all an example? <laughs> and y'all know I'm right. <laughs> you, 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 you want me to tell you when when, you want me to tell you when the flesh win? When those words go out, you can't bring them back. And they're not pretty words. Anybody saying that? Those words are not pretty words. Sometimes they're curse words. My mom used to say, my mom used to say some people cuss like a sailor. I don't know what that means, but a sailor, whatever that means. I don't know what that means. A sailor. I don't know. I guess they cuss a lot. I don't know. But 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 that's that's a, that's one way you can tell that you operating in the flesh with those curse words go out. Now, oh yeah. Well, well, you allowing the flesh to win. I always use Pat and Joe. Who is Pat and Joe? Nope. Pat, Joe. Pat, Joe. Now I'm leaving. Because if I stay right there, something's going to come out. Ain't going to be pretty. Especially, watch this now, especially, okay, let, let's just say my wife and I, we, we, we're married. We, we are. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're married. And, and we've been married for 34, this year may be 34 years. Right? We still have disagreements. But what we've learned is not to call each other out their name. Out of their name. Out of our name. Anybody talking to me? Amen. That's good stuff. That's good teaching. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. She's still my wife whether she agree with me or not. That don't give me the license to call her out of her name. And it don't give her the license to call me out my name. I'm still her husband. And we as sisters and brothers in Christ don't give us the Same thing. I just use a marriage relationship. Because in relationship, that's what a devil attacks the most. Is your relationship. He, he don't care nothing about you. That's right. He's after the relationship. Because the devil is about what? Division. He wants to divide. So, this is what he'll do. Okay, uh, Lady Henry. He, the devil won't even call her Lady Henry, Betty. Call Ronald out of his name. Okay, now what's going to happen? She called me out of my name. I'm going to call her back out of her name. Now, this is what we're doing. We're going back and forth. And the devil said, okay, now they're arguing. I can go over here to Sandra and Michael. Mm -hmm. Betty and Ronald are still over here arguing. I got them where I want them. Now I'm going to go to somebody else. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's real talk. Division. Division. Mm -hmm. So you got to be delivered from people. Delivered from people is, hey, kill the kind. That's when you know you deliver. I'm not, I'm not going to come down to your level. That's right. 
Because that's what you want me to do. That's what the devil wants us to do. And I'm not going to do it. Mm. Mm. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I've been doing this too long to allow anybody. Well, I better not use that word because sometimes it happens. You ever been in a situation where you got out of character? Yeah. You in the flesh. I only heard one that, that was right. Uh, there's two. Has anybody ever got out of character before? <laughs> All right. Okay.
you carry it. Can you be stupid? He also tells him this, Matthew 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor. So, why are you carrying the burden? My wife, she probably watching, hey baby. My wife, she wanted me to change in certain areas for so long. So, she carried that burden. She wanted it so bad. Some things she can't change. So why carry stuff you can't change? People. Baby, we can't change people. But I know who can. If, if, we, just, if we just get out of his way, let him change. What needs to be changed? That's he right. made us. Right. He's the creator. That's right. He knows the plan. He knows everything about us. Right. So get out of the way, man. Do it. He is what? In control. That's right. But Pastor, I just have what you just said. He's in control if we allow him to be in control. If we allow him to be in control. And see, sometimes, okay. All right, Lord, now I'm praying on this thing for. Two months, where are you? Mm. So you? So we'll say, okay, he ain't going to do it, so I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> we'll fix another fix. We'll get in, God will fix the one fix, and then get out that fix, and then he'll fix us another fix, and we keep on getting fixes, and not realizing God is in control. In control. I couldn't come up. I had a plan A, so I had to stick to plan A, but I always wanted to go to plan B, and every time I went to plan B, God told me to go to plan B. That's right. With God, ain't no plan B. something on the way because I want a lot of things to happen in my life just like you do. Yes, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit quickly convicted me to say, God, if it's your will, then you let it happen. If it's God's will, then it's not going to be a scroll. That's right. That's right. And it will come to pass. You're going to have peace with it. Nobody can take it from you. You may have some struggle, but God will give you the strength and the, and, and the guidance and the provision to get through it. But when you do it on your own, you 
in the wilderness ten times. I don't know about y'all. I've been in the wilderness. That's not a good feeling. I don't care. You can decide if it look good, smell good, and the grass is real green. You know, what's that grass green all, all year round? I don't know what that grass is called. I don't know, some kind of term. But it, just because it look good, that don't mean it's God's way. Well, well, the, the best example is here. This wasn't my plan. See, y'all laughing, but I'm being funny. So what I did, well, it was in, it was in phases because I didn't automatically do it at once. I didn't surrender all at once. Y'all been there? You, we surrender fifty percent. <laughs> Until Brother Walker, he wore me out. Yeah. I got time. I said, God, I surrender. <laughs> and guess what happened when I surrender? <laughs> Evangelist Boston, blessings. Yeah. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Start coming. Mm -hmm. Because I was where? God wanted me to be. He's Alpha and Omega. He knows the beginning and he knows the end. Sometimes God will cause us to be uncomfortable. That's a good sign that God, that's God. But we want to take the easy way. Life is a struggle. But one thing about a struggle with God we're going to win. We're going to win with God. Yeah, we, we, we have the victory with God. Now, you're going to go out and, okay, okay, this looks good over here. I think I'm going to go this way. Okay, God is saying, go ahead. When you get tired, I'm still, that's one, that's one good thing about God. When you get tired, he'll say, come on, now, nah, now, nah, come on. The prodigal son. The prodigal son. That's where I was going, the prodigal son. He thought the grass was greener 
on the other side. He ran out of his possessions. And guess who was waiting on him? The father. So Joe let go and let go. So tonight, as we go home, I have a challenge for you. Okay? I have a challenge for you. And I'm going to intercede for you because I'm believing God that, that, that he gives you the strength to do this challenge tonight. Write down at least five things. I'm sure we have more. It's at the top of your list that you need to let go of. There may be some, I'm pretty sure there are a lot, that you can't let go on your own. Mm. Like stubbornness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doubt. Mm -hmm. You need God help with that. Amen. You can't do that on your own. Amen. Revenge. Amen. Write down what's at the top, at least five, mm -hmm. that you want God to help you let go of. Mm -hmm. And I'm praying that God will bless you in the end. Amen. Okay? We're going to believe God. Amen. He's going to bless us in the end. Amen. Okay? Amen. All right? Amen. That's between you and God. Amen. That's between you and God. Okay? You ain't got to tell, you ain't got to call Joe and say, Joe, I got five things I'm going to let go of. Uh -uh. Jamie, that, Joe, you let go of some things. <laughs> But at least five things that you need to let go of and ask God to give you the strength to let it go and then let God do what he needs to do in your life. Amen. I promise you, you'll see a difference. But she you got good, you got off tonight. <laughs> because maybe, hopefully, hopefully the next time we talk, we're going to talk about five, the five P's. Five P's. I give them to you tonight. I give them to you. Five P's when it comes to facing your battles. Five P's. Okay? Five P's. Preparation. Mm -hmm. See, I want to use that for an example because you, you say you, were going, you had planned it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but if, if, we, if we're planning to go somewhere, you have to prepare. What? Five P's. Preparation. Provision. Power. Persistence. And prevail. Some, some people may not have it. Preparation. Provision. Power. Persistence and prevail. Okay? All right. Jim challenge is what? Let go. Let go. Let go. See, I'm ready to let it go. I'm ready to let go. Okay, that was one, two, three people. <laughs> Come on, everybody say, I'm ready. I'm ready. To let it go. Let it go. All right? Any questions? Shirley, you got a question. I can't hear you. <laughs> anybody? Anybody have a question? Anybody have anything? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, no, no, not yet. No, yeah, no, not yet. He ain't got back with me yet. He, um, um, he's going to have to call me back, but he didn't call me back, so not yet. Not yet. Are y'all ready for Wednesday's worship? Well, just he didn't, he didn't get back with me in time. Once you go shoot for July, okay? All right. All right. Any other questions? Any other questions before we go? Yes, ma'am, mother. Huh? Yeah, 
have been having some good times, but it just, I don't know why the Lord wanted me to just to let go tonight with Jim and John. I don't know why. Like, like, when the Lord is like that, somebody need to hear that. Somebody need to hear that. I mean, you're holding some stuff that just got to let go. It, 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 it's just not a good place to be. Pastor, do you have a chance back? Are we off? Okay, we, we done. Thank you all. God bless you. Lord's will, we'll see you next week on Wednesday's Word. We thank you for our Facebook community family. Come on, let's give our Facebook community family. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. My question is, just like anything else is taught, do you think people holding grudge and resentment is kind of shown in family? 